It's time for Clubhouse Chatter as we continue the show. Once again, here's Norm Ordez and Tony Torcato. That's right. We are back. And so this show is kind of a special one, Brian. It is. It is. And so this is show number 100. 100. That's impressive. Right. 100 <laughs> for, for Clubhouse Chat. That's impressive, though. And man. so, you know, we've been doing this for, God, Brian, are we in our third year now? I think we're, we're closing into our third year. It's oh. going to be close to that. Wow. We're getting old. And so, you know, wow. it started, it all started with, um, huh. I don't, Blog Talk Radio. And then Brian, you know, I've known Brian for years, and Brian approached me and said, Hey, man, I've got a studio I'm making. You need to come out and check it out. It's a brilliant idea. It took me forever to get out here. It did. But when I came out here, Hmm. the, I mean, it was just, the potential was just there. And so we, we did a show or two just for the heck of it, and it clicked. And so then that's back when I was writing with 980 Know-It-All with Josh mm-hmm. and Kelly. So we brought them up, and we actually did our first shows with Josh and Kelly. <laughs> and uh, it has just kind of grown from there. And so Clubhouse Chatter is truly a labor of love. I mean, it is because I love baseball, you know, and working in baseball all those years and um, just, you know, getting to know some of the players and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it was my kind of my my chance to kind of stay in the game. That's a good way to and stay so, in. And so, you know, ninety five percent of of the guys I get, I mean, I get the guys. I do I do all the work. Mm-hmm. Um, you got Brian producing it. Brian you producing did. it, and you know, Great. we picked up a couple of sponsors along the way. I've and watched it's a lot been, of your shows. It's and been you pretty some awesome. Good guys on here. You guys got some pretty well known uh, individuals. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it kind of blows me away at times mm-hmm. because, you know, I, I look at it as, um, you know, first and foremost, I'm a baseball fan. Mm-hmm. And so, but you look at some of the guys that I've had, I mean, Carl Erskine multiple times, um, Bobby Canseco. Winkles, Ozzy Canseco, you know, and those guys mm-hmm. could That's just sit cool. there and say, screw you, I don't want to come on. Yeah, but they're, Charlie they're nice Lau, to come on. you know, um, mm-hmm. Jerry Royce. Man, and then, you know, mm-hmm. Ben Ford, Chef Ben Ford will be coming on here at 6.15 for his first time. And, yeah. you know, big time celebrity chef. In Los Angeles. But he comes on, mm-hmm. you know. So, Tony, man, what have you been up to? Oh, just living the dream. Being a dad. Yeah. So we were talking about, we were talking <laughs> about a Bleacher Report article that I had mm-hmm. read that's been mm-hmm. out for a while. Mm-hmm. And it was the five biggest San Francisco giant busts Yes, I've ever. seen that. And you were number two. Yeah. How, I have a lot of questions about that. I have a lot of questions, for too. For one, I want to know who wrote the article and where that guy played, because he probably played, he didn't play anywhere, probably. He might have played high school, maybe. He might have played Little League. And... Um, his position is probably left out because he was left out of the lineup. You know, and we talked about the grind. Unfortunately. <laughs> we had talked <laughs> about the grind. You know, and also on that list was Todd Linden, Lance Necro, mm-hmm. Jesse Foppert. Mm. I can't remember who number five was, but, I mean, all all great baseball players <sighs> that had a cup of coffee in mm-hmm. the bigs, and for whatever reason, their major league career didn't work out. You know, it's, guys that write those articles, it's like, how, how do you play in the big leagues and, and be considered a failure? I don't know. Well, if, you, if you give a good explanation, maybe, okay. But there is none. I think if you don't play 10 years and don't hit 250 home runs and drive in yeah, I mean, 1,000 I mean, runs, you're a failure? failure? Yeah. I mean, uh, the fact ridiculous. that you made the major leagues, you know, I, don't look at it, I don't look at that as a failure at all. No, guys that wrote those articles, they wish they played. I mean, how hard? So, drafted in 1998. 98. 98. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, number one. Mm -hmm. So, you got up, you know, signing bonus up around a million bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the pressure had to have been huge. 
mm-hmm. because you're coming out of high school and you sign mm-hmm. with the San Francisco Giants. Yeah, I mean it's a lot of a lot of weight on your shoulders. I mean, number one, you're you're basically a millionaire. Well, after taxes, I mean, after taxes, <laughs> probably not. Probably but not. but you know, yeah. but still though, now all of a sudden you've got some money, mm-hmm. and so now you're kind of dealing with that. And at a young age, eighteen, nineteen mm-hmm. years old, mm-hmm. I mean, that's really got to kind of, you know, I don't care how grounded you are, that's really got to play with you a little bit. A little bit, but I wasn't. You know, all they want to do is play. You know, it's not my choice they drafted me in the first round. Right. I didn't know that. You just you played know, the game. I just played the game. I thought it was going maybe second, third round. Who kn- I mean, who knows? I could have drafted in the sixth round. I probably still would have signed. I just had a full-ride scholarship to UNLV. You know, um, you know I was probably going to go pro anyways. Right. I, I don't know what round, but if I didn't in the first round, maybe. So later, you, obviously, but so it's not my signed, choice they, they drafted me there. So, so. you signed with... The Giants. Mm-hmm. So, did they send you to Arizona right away? No, I went straight to Salem Kaiser. You went straight mm-hmm. to Salem Volcanoes. Kaiser. So you mm-hmm. skipped. So did they have the Arizona Arizona Giants then? You know what? I, I don't, don't think they. Did. I don't think they did. I don't think I saw. I, I think Salem Kaiser was Woodland their yes. Up to Oregon. Mm-hmm. And so at that time, Salem Kaiser was the first step. It was the first step. And what was that like? I mean, so now you're coming out of Woodland, California, where you are a star. I guess I don't know. Drafted number one, mm-hmm. so you you done something right? Yeah, you know, I was it was I was proud. The town was proud. Uh, There's a lot of people, you know that. Uh, and I remember that. I remember you coming up because the selling point for mm-hmm. Tony Torcado was your swing. Mm-hmm. Your swing. You had a beautiful swing, and I can't remember who they compared you with. Who Will they comp- Clark. Will Clark. That's that was her. the talk, yeah. And that you had a swing like Will Clark. Mm-hmm. And so you get to Salem Kaiser. Mm-hmm. And now all Struggled. of a sudden, all of a sudden, now all around you is a bunch of guys mm-hmm. who are like you, mm-hmm. who were stars elsewhere. Now all of a sudden, everybody can play. Everybody what was that play. like? Well, at first I struggled. Like at first, you know, I only had t- like two hits in my first uh, like 35 at bats or something like that. But then after that, I figured it out real quick. Well, you have to. I did. And then I, I finished up real, real strong. We ended up winning the championship and, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, I figured it out quick. But I already, I already can hit. You know, if I, if I was, they said, oh, go to AAA, I'm 18, I'm still going to hit. Right. You know, I'm an aggressive hitter. I swing, you know. <laughs> I just make a bad pitches too, but I'm aggressive. I'm, I'm swinging. I'm not going to throw to walk. I'm going to there to try to take the pitcher's head off. There is not... A lot of difference between somebody playing at Salem Kaiser as playing double A AA or triple A. Mm-hmm. I mean, number one, it's about um, pitch selection. It it's is about learning mm-hmm. how to hit the hit the off speed stuff. Mm-hmm. And basically, it's it's about you know you're learning how to be a professional ball player. Mm-hmm. Is that is that pretty much right on the head? It was right on the head, and uh, you know it's a lot of work. People don't know the the amount of work you put into it. And the hours you're out there taking early batting practice. It's a full time fielding. job plus some. Oh, plus some, yeah. You know, you're people getting, think you just show up to the game and it's all glamorous. No, you know, no, no. You got a game you, time at seven oh five. But we're at the park you're at, at the one, ballpark. One you know, you o'clock. got early work mm-hmm. at noon, you know, sometimes if there's rovers coming in and mm-hmm. then and yeah, then you're you out there taking early the, you gotta be at the ballpark at balls. like one o'clock, two o'clock mm-hmm. for the game. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, you take you do a little infield practice, you take hitting, you know, you do your BP, then you take a little bit of break and, and then you get then you get, you mm-hmm. know, the spread, which Yeah, peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> peanut butter and, I, uh, I'll tell you what, I some Kool Aid. I am a, a master of making the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Me too. I make that. it with a spoon now. Get, That's impressive. High tech. And so so speaking of that ninety eight team, you were telling me a little bit about a reunion coming up. Can, Supposedly can you, there is. Can you chat a little bit about that? I believe so. We're well we won the ninety eight. Right. So I think we're having a reunion at the Volcano Stadium, um, some point in June, I think, or July. So that'd be pretty cool. That's gonna be way if cool. I, if they can get some of the guys we played with out there. I'm gonna have be, to I'm gonna have to dig out all those baseball cards. I know, man. Holy the, cow. Gosh, 
a long time ago. So, who, <laughs> so we were chatting. We were talking about who was all on that team. So Keith Comstock was the manager. manager. Mm -hmm. Bert Hunter was the – Bert Hunter was the hitting coach. Hitting coach. Who was the pitching mm -hmm. coach? Do you remember? Oh, man. Hmm. I don't. <laughs> I really don't. Um, Cody Ransom's on that team. Uh, Scoop McDowell. Uh, Jeremy Luster. Doug Clark. Doug Clark. Uh-huh. Um, Nate Bump. Ryan Vogelsong. Nate Bump. Ryan Vogelsong was on that. Wow. On that team, too. Vogel, mm -hmm. yeah. Good old Bogey. Nate Vogel. Yeah, Nate mm -hmm. Bump. So Nate Bump went on to the Florida yeah. Marlins. Mm -hmm. He was like one of their... Original draft picks when they first I think started, so. I was believe. Was it 90, 90, uh, 97, 97? Something like that, it? yeah. Yeah, Nate Bump. Hmm. So what else we got? So we got we got Salem Kaiser. They got a banquet coming up, which you are going to be speaking uh, as well. Mm -hmm. It's probably a little question and answer thing or something like that. Okay. I did that before. Um, I, I went the last two out of three years. Okay. I don't think last year I went... Well, the year before I went, and the year before that I went. And where's it going to be held at? Do you remember? Uh, the Quality Suites. Quality Suites. But, uh, before where they have that, oh, I can't remember. Because I know they used to hold it at, like... Um, mm, I think it was... Uh, God damn it. It was Kaiser. It was, like, Kaiser Community something Hall like or something like mm -hmm. that. It was one of the main places there in Kaiser. It's a good event, though. Great event. Kyle Haynes, Volcanoes manager, yeah. will be speaking as mm -hmm. well. He's he's great to listen to. Great guy. He is a good guy. Uh, young manager is good relates to the young players well he guided him to the playoffs last year are they going to have any uh tony torcado stuff to auction oh I'm probably sure not going to. <laughs> um, i doubt it yeah i doubt it i don't know if anybody would buy that stuff i you know there's people out there <laughs> you know you're you're you know what cracks me up Ooh. is you're so you're humble but i i you know, I, I, I consider Kaiser, myself salem kaiser history you are in salem kaiser history you're a, you're a big name you well, know because of the championship and uh, and that fact like that you're that, still around is, that you came I want to be affiliated with that championship team because that was their first championship and, that was and it was uh, it's a big part of history and I and like being was a part what? of that the team was a year old so that that's, was their second that, season yeah their second season so it's a good thing um, that's why I love coming back to the the games and do coaching the stadium stuff like that so yeah it's a good time Jerry Walker known that guy since '98 yeah. And, a good and he guy, is now good, good he owner. is now the sole owner of the team. Is he? he bought, the sole yeah, owner? Bill mm -hmm. uh, Bill um, Walker or Bill Tucker sold his portion to to the Walkers. I was nice. checking it out, and so Mr. W um, Tucker isn't coming in anymore. But yeah, that volcano, the banquet, the great event of the Sal Knox and the fun. great dinner. Yeah, um, prime rib this year. Yeah, so they they stepped time. it up a little bit. They they get people there, and it's a great great time. And I believe tickets are still available. Mm -hmm. I think they're thirty five bucks, thirty five bucks get for one, tickets. fifty bucks for two, and you could get them at volcanosbaseball.com, dot com. I believe mm -hmm. is the website get them now, and um, it, it is a pretty cool yeah be sold out sold out yeah I, you Most know. Likely. The Volcanoes, so I will say this about the Volcanoes, and they have a pretty solid fan base. You they know, do. they might it's not. It's a big family. It's, it, they it, might they not do. sell out every game, but Great they've atmosphere. got, they've got, you know, they've got their regulars. And, you know, being around the Volcanoes for a number of years, you know, it's, it, like you said, it's, it's, it's like a family. I like, you I know, like, I like being a part and of so, it. And so, I mean, a lot of those people are Oops. still around mm -hmm. from when you were playing. They are. You know? A lot of the lot of the fans and some host families too. Yeah, and so that's kind of fun. It's a good time, man. That's kind of fun to see. And they're always good every yeah. year. They're always they're always good too. So they yeah. put a quality product on the field. They do, and um, of course, Indeed. I think this year this year will be no difference. We'll see what mm -hmm. what they the Giants. Kyle's do in the draft. Kyle's a good good manager. And then um, yeah. you know with the roving instructors, you know coming through, you know getting Lee Smith and. <laughs> Burt and, Bradley, uh, Burt Bradley, the Kung Fu master. <laughs> Burt Bradley, and then uh, the ninja. Yeah, the ninja, the ninja would probably be there. I've never seen that guy in years. You know, yeah. nobody ever sees no, him. Never seen him. You yeah. know, you don't know. You don't know he is there until Somewhere. you see him. And so we're talking about, um, gosh dang it, name is escaping me right now. <sighs> hmm, who was it? That's, that's what I'm thinking. But anyways, you talking about before today. Yeah. Earlier. Uh, no, no. Mm. 
So we're talking about um, a giant, one of the giant's main players, who Dick Tidrow, who oh. we call the Ninja. The and ninja. it's kind of funny because he is, and he, he does not announce his, um, he doesn't announce his visits. And so he, he likes to, he'll, he'll pay for his ticket. Mm-hmm. And then he'll come in and sit down. I, you know, have sat down and been videoing or something, you know, and there he was right next to me. And he wants to see the players in their natural setting and not nervous of knowing that he's there. And so after a game or sometimes he'll wait mm-hmm. and do like a three game homestand or a five game homestand and wait till like games three or four or whatever. And then he'll go into the clubhouse. And so I've heard story. Rob Nepper mm-hmm. has told me stories of, of um, him in Bakersfield hiding underneath the stands and that the players actually would have bounties out for him. And so like five dollars, ten dollars, $10, $10, <laughs> yeah, or whatever. You know, if you can spot Tidro in the stands and, you know, let everybody know. And that still happens. I don't know about the uh, the bounties, but, you know, I know like that. Like, you never see, like, the GM there. No, no. Uh, uh, well, Swiss, they got Evans now. Yeah, Bobby. But, uh, Bobby's there every once in a while. Uh, Sabian. But you don't see Sabian. The businessman. Sab- yeah, Sabian is a businessman, even though he does like the local wines from around right here. Yes. Yeah. And so, but yeah, check that out. That's coming up. Volcanosbaseball.com. Um, tickets are on sale. Thirty-five bucks, fifty bucks for be a pair. A good time. It's gonna be a good time. You get to eat prime rib, and uh, you know, here some here's stuff. some baseball stories, mm-hmm. man. Pat yeah. Lafferty was there uh, the year before. And Pat Lafferty has got baseball stories. Oh, he has a lot. Man, he was the voice. So anyway, we're gonna take a couple minute break. And then we're going to come back, and we're going to come back with Chef Ben Ford. I'm looking forward I'm gonna to this. I'm going to eat because I'm going to be hungry we're gonna, we're after gonna we talk We're going to talk food to and baseball. Ford. All right. We'll be back.